Aquaman Andromeda issue one. Ram V uh, writing with Christian Ward on the art. So this is a black label prestige books, one of these big chunky fifty pagers. Um, it's it it almost feels like a an indie book in the sense that yeah, it's set in a world where Aquaman exists, but mm-hmm. Aquaman is a relatively small character. is very mythical yeah. in this, and we mostly focus on the crew of a submarine that is launched from uh another ship uh called, called the andromeda which is going down to investigate mm-hmm. a mysterious uh seemingly ufo that crashed into the ocean uh, yeah so the so- point that it's going to is where for decades now they've dropped like spaceships and satellites because it's the the deepest point from you know anywhere on earth right it's the middle of the ocean um, well, not so just it's, that. It's, it's 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 the deepest. It's, it's the furthest away from civilization, but it's also mm-hmm. because of the uh, something to do. Uh, they say it in the book. International right? waters, right? Well, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's something to do with uh, the the area, but it, it kind of like stops like all the uh, nutritional water from like going there. Mm-hmm. So there's not even that much wildlife. It's like it's kind of like right. a dead area in the ocean, but there's not even a yeah. lot of sea life. Well, and I and I took that that's because it's so isolated and it's so deep, right? Like there's like not even life goes there. Uh, that's where stuff goes to die. Well, no, um, they actually say it in the book. What causes it? There's like a, it's a water thing. Like like the <laughs> man, I need to read this more carefully. I was just taking it as <laughs> like I can't you know. explain it. I, 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 yeah. I, I'm assuming it's based on something kind of true, I, I, but I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's bollocks, but yeah. I, I, I'm trusting Ram V knows what he's doing here. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But it's, it's, it's a line in the book, which I thought was kind of neat. It's, it's, like, part of the reason why it's chosen to dump stuff. And I also assume mm-hmm. this was kind of true. Like, maybe they dump, like, certain ships mm-hmm. here or something. I don't know. Uh, but, um, yeah, so so we get interest in this character, Yvette, who's kind of our main character who's on this crew. Um, and they're on this mysterious, you know, mission... And there is a bunch of different scientists who have been assembled for this. Uh, so it's very much like a lot of different movies that bring a lot of different new specialists together for like a, mm-hmm. a first contact situation. But the way this, this thing crashed into the water suggests some form of intelligence because it's picked this area specifically. Um, the way it crashed was kind of suspicious. So this this hard-ass captain is taking them down here and he's like explaining to them that this is, this is a potential first contact. Yeah, so this is called the Spacecraft Cemetery, yeah. uh, because every major space program has been using this as a, a dumping ground since the 70s. I'm assuming that's based on some truth. Uh, that, feels, yeah. that feels like a bit there's, of... There's a specific name to it, Point Nemo. That's, I'm going to yeah. look this up. Uh, I'm assuming that's so. based on some sort of real uh, nerd trivia. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, was it? Yeah, the nutrient-rich waters don't go there. That's what I was looking for earlier. Yeah. Uh, which is so there's nothing nothing thrives in this part of the ocean uh, so mm-hmm. it's a very dead area so yeah so so they all sort of debate what they're doing there it's all top secret they they say they can still leave at this point this is the point of no return no mm-hmm. they can send an NDA and leave uh, but they all stick around and you know we get a little bit of character from some of the others but it's mainly our Yvette and there's like a Russian dude who uh, yeah. who we get a little bit of who's kind of like you know, if they've got me here, then it's because it might go south, kind of thing. He's, he's kind of that type of character, right? Yeah. Uh, and the kind of he, the captain kind of admits that there's not, like, at least he's not admitting there's a contingency plan if they're hostile, whatever this thing is or whatever is, these beans yeah. are. So I think the, the, the clear thing I would want to get get across about this issue is that there is some Aquaman stuff, and. Uh, basically, it's just him going to visit this small village, but he's staying off the grid. He doesn't want the world to know where he is or anything like yeah. that. Um, but other than other than like sort of like a, a a cool appearance later in the book, there's not a lot of him, and there's a little bit of a tease that Black Adam's also not Black Adam, sorry, Black, <laughs> Black Manta. Black Manta, sorry, we're talking about yeah. a lot about Black Adam today. Uh, yep, yep. Black Black Manta has been hired to go and seek this thing out as well by someone super top secret as well. So he's been paid off to go and try and find this thing too. So he's going to intersect later on, presumably as well. But the main thing this book is, is that it's a, it's a, you know, it's any movie where a group of characters is put together to go and investigate the mysterious object, right? It's, mm-hmm. that's what it is, but it's underwater rather than space, which it maybe is more commonly tends to be. And the weird thing is, is that when I got to the first Aquaman bit, where it's like him visiting this small village and helping them build stuff in the summer, 
I was like, you know what, this is all right, but like, get back to the ship. I want these original characters, but I want, I want, I want the adventure. Yeah. I want the first yeah. contact story. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, the, the Aquaman stuff I liked, but it was very much detached. Like it was an Aquaman, yeah. but I was like, what is going on? He's going and talking to this elder on this, you know, Russian island. They're like First Nations people uh, up in Kamchatka, and you know, it's someone that's very familiar with Arthur and stuff, which I liked. But it was very like, I don't know, it was a weird detached Arthur Curry, yeah. um, which wasn't fun to read. And then we got to the Black Manta stuff, which. I was like, oh, he's doing pirate stuff. Well, like, and that tie- that immediately tied into what was going on because he's going for right. the same, you know, on a on. A, right. it's, it's not technically a UFO because it, it just no. crashed. It, it, they don't know for sure it was flying, so I guess it's more of an unidentified, right, but crashed object. <laughs> Autom- then, then the Black Manta stuff I was like, okay, this is the Aquaman stuff that I recognize that he's, you know. He's going down there. Everyone has a price. Yeah, and you know, he takes he takes you know but those, from people because he's a pirate. And then we get back to the fun stuff, which is the the crew on the ship. Yeah, well, I think the thing that gets me is obviously there's a great atmosphere to it because you've got all these like panels that are surrounded by like water, uh, mm-hmm. like uh, sort of in the surrounding like background, and it's very sort of like stylized water. So it has this feeling the whole time that they're just plunging to the depths. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like like a sixties movie the way it's like all these characters on a ship going to like some weird unforeseen part of the ocean uh and you you, you build a bit of character even this sh- like submarine that they're on has got like kind of a mysterious like engine that's really fancy like you know because like she's looking at it at one point and it's uh this big orb and um the russian guy starts like talking about it and she's like hey do you know what this is and you know they're kind of keeping it uh under wraps but all he got was prototype quantum gravity propulsion drive so it's you know it's this high-tech thing so even the mm-hmm. Like, whoever sent them here, like, the ship they came in on, um, like, pretended to be, like, a, a cargo vessel, but it's actually... So, so they're keeping everything very secretive. And so, where did these orders come from? I mean, the captain says that all of the governments of these various, like, countries they came from all agreed that these are the people that should go on this mission, which implies uh-huh. it's a joint country thing. But when the big thing goes down later, which we'll get to in a minute, mm-hmm. the, he mentions, oh, three navies are going to be coming to this location. So it sounds like the militaries and navies of these countries don't know what's going on. So this no, is like they, ultra top secret. Yeah, so they're going so low that it's kind of anyone's game under the ocean. But if they were to surface to check on the ship, that's going to put them in danger because like you said, the three different navy showing up to so make it's like, it fired on yeah which says to me that okay so you're saying that all the countries agreed on these people is that a lie because it could be or is it a case of like yeah like the the top secret brass have agreed on this but like it's so top secret they can't tell their their chain of command about it and they can't tell like right or, know, so. or what if this is a corporate thing yeah right? that's that if it's if it's a lie it's probably corporate is what because it first made me think be. of aliens real and, Jitani, and, yeah uh-huh. better that i uh I'm, so, I'm, on, I'm on board with it that that's what made me think of uh, of that um also real quick uh so i look i started looking at point nemo oh sure and apparently it there's a lot of lovecraftian ah. lore around this but is it's, that... it's point nemo a real Thing. It's a real place. It's okay. a real place, and it is like the real. It's in the middle of the South Pacific gyre, where the current, because of where it's at and how deep that it is, all that nutrition stuff. That's all real. So there's not a lot of stuff. The water's a different color, but it. Um, that's where H.P. Lovecraft said that Cthulhu's home stems from. Mm. So, knowing that this is going to go into some psychological places, based off of you know, you read the back cover. I'm wondering if they, it, like it's not going to be Cthulhu, but if there's something similar, if there's oh, like a madness, right? That we're definitely that, going places with it. I, yeah, I, I think I do love this idea. There's this natural phenomena where part of the ocean is this extra dead. I mean, we. I mean, to be honest, the ocean looks like a mm-hmm. big dead body of space tails anyway. But like it, the idea that even from a marine life point of view, there's a mm-hmm. dead section of the the uh, the ocean that. Yeah. Like in the same way that like writers can use space to be this you know vacuum that then add it to the horror, you you can use this like part on Earth as like oh this is really mysterious and this uh, you know like anything mm-hmm. could be down there that's hidden so, because nothing lives there. So just here's a real fun fact about Point Nemo is like it is so deep that if you sailed there, the closest human beings to you would be the astronauts aboard the International Space Station, passing 416 kilometers overhead. The nearest inhabited landmass to Point Nemo is over 2,700 kilometers to the Easter Islands, which I believe they bring up in the book. 
Yeah. Is the crew talks about Easter Island being the closest there. So like, yeah, there might as well be in deep space. Yeah. At this point. Well, I mean, deep deep space and like deep underwater have always mm-hmm. felt somewhat similar. Obviously, <laughs> gives me anxiety. No matter. <laughs> uh, obviously, I would say the water feels slightly better in the sense that you know a vacuum it will will kill you pretty quickly. I mean, so mm-hmm. the water if you're not. Yeah, I mean the but, pressure once you yeah. have a certain you know certain. Oh, depth, of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? The pressure is something that uh, pressure is the thing that everyone forgets about. I think when you talk about yep. going deep underwater. Uh, yeah. but anywho, uh, like, you know, so, so the, the Russian guy's kind of talking to, uh, Yvette a little bit. Yvette started the book talking about her father, like, loving being out in the water. It was always kind of something mm-hmm. like to do, and it, it led to her being a marine biologist, uh, which is what her speciality mm-hmm. is. Um, but this, so there's something happens where this unidentified object, this big thing, sends out some kind of shockwave or signal and one of the scientists, you know, the one who's there, like, you know, you know, monitoring that kind of thing, uh, you know, picks up on it, calls everyone in, they talk about what's happening, and it's right after this where he says something's coming from it. Like, this is so, this has done something. And mm-hmm. right then is a panel of the book that this guy was reading. is like You, you can see what it is. It says, Kraken Rises. And yeah. sure enough, uh, the next bit of the, the book is the ship that they came from above, the Esperanza, and uh, you get some classic, you know, panels of the, the radar and, like, something's coming towards the boat. And then you get, and you get, like, a, like, what looks like a tentacle coming out of the, the fog, right? I love this page. Mm-hmm. And then the next page is the full page spread of the giant tentacle coming up uh, overhead. Uh, and then the two-page spread of all the tentacles just crushing the ship in the middle. And we see, like, some of the sailors get onto lifeboats and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um and then down in the, the submarine, they're like, shit, shit, shit. Like, the, something's just attacked that boat. Like, we don't know if, what's going on with it. Should we turn back now? Is this thing going to be hostile? And the captain's like, no, we have to go ahead. We can't go up because all these navies from all these countries yeah. are going to, like, be aware this has happened now, that this ship... And they're going to discover quite quickly that that ship was a lie. That what it was yep. pretending to be was untrue. And so we can go up and help because 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 the rest of the crew they want to go up and like basically we can act as a lifeboat we can we can like take on like all the people who you know survived, um and but then, then of course the interesting thing is like as they're debating this they see that there's something else on the radar and it looks human and obviously you're like oh it's Aquaman this is uh-huh. Arthur and sure enough like you get the, the some some pages of Arthur like sort of you know fighting back this tentacle creature uh, back into the it was a great two page spread. Uh, where it's just Arthur, and he's fairly small on the, the side of the page, and it's just these giant tentacles, some of which are in shadow, and it's like him just like facing this thing back into the depths of the ocean. It is gorgeous. It, it reminded me of when I was a kid and Twenty Thousand Leagues was on, and um, and uh, Kirk Douglas goes out to fight the squid, it, and the squid just looks so much bigger. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying uh, to show off in the video for people. Gotcha. <laughs> but yeah, um, it it just the sense of scale and then just the coloring. It, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, um, and you see these extra blips uh, in the water and just like sort of the empty hallways of the submarine, and it's showing you it's just you know like this is such a great like crescendo to this big ending, uh, and then it's got a little epilogue section uh, that shows uh, you've. Uh, Running out and seeing her father uh, falling from like the boat that he's in when he's you know he's late home for dinner and diving into the water to uh, try and go and save him, um, and you know we presume she fails that this is the tragic like passing of her father, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and then but there's another scene actually in present day on the submarine where it's her and the Russian again, and uh, he, they're saying hey, the captain's called everyone to the bridge, um, and he's like yep we're we're going forward you know because they still want to turn back. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, this. Uh, but this is where he mentions the three navies. I, I said it earlier because the, the two things okay. blurred together in my head. Um, but yeah. Um, so like, we have to, we're going to attempt first contact. You know, so it ends in just sort of reestablishing what the mm-hmm. the thing is. If I have a small critique, basically in the pacing, is that I don't know if we needed the epilogue. Like, see when it says Javette and we get this flashback. Yeah. Um, I almost feel like this could have just been the start of book two. Uh, I think just the 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 quietness of the hallways after this big ending of Aquaman fighting away this like Kraken yep. effectively I think that is your perfect ending yeah 
That yeah. that would have been nice. So, also, um, so it's, it's a minor quibble though, because there's nothing wrong with those last like you know four or five pages. Like they're yeah. they're, they're very good and they're still playing to the story. I just like these could have been right. the start of book two. So when the kraken just suddenly appears and takes down the, the boat, I yeah. think it's funny because Esperanza means hope in Spanish. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's no more hope. Yeah. Right? Like, um, but it's, it also reminded me of, of, of sphere, the Michael Crichton story. Oh, right? sure. Where, where they, where there's a sphere underwater and it ends up, uh, if I remember it, it right, it shows you your fears or it, it, gets into you so i'm wondering if you know not necessarily this was the sky sphere but he's reading a kraken book it scans him and it and it you know gives him a kraken there but why did it show up at that boat at the top and not to them in the sub a lot of questions going on but mm -hmm. yeah that's what that reminded me of yeah um you know i love the build up to the kraken scene because it you know it is fairly quick but if you actually go back and look at it there is a couple of pages that build up to like a horror movie perfectly. Like you, you mm -hmm. get like, so, so the first page when it cuts back up to the boat is just the, the, the first panel is just the boat and it's just like a flat color. Basically I love the one little highlight that shows where there's light hitting the water. It's just a flat color. So it's like perfectly still and calm. Right. So it's, mm -hmm. it's that horror movie thing where you're showing things are perfectly still and there's nothing happening. And then you can, you can practically hear the beep of the radar when you look at the, the radar and the, the, the dots coming towards the middle and then you get a little bit of a rumble, you get the fog, and then walking up on the deck in the fog, and then the tentacle pulls the one sailor out into the into the nothing, and then you get the big page. And then you get an even bigger page. <laughs> so you, you get a tall mm -hmm. page for the tentacle, which is one big page spread, basically. And then you get a big two-page spread, which is the actual destruction of the boat. It, it is perfectly paced. The art is phenomenal. Um, I, like... I'm trying to think if I like what, what I know of Christian Ward from. I feel like I, I, the name's popped up before, but I, I couldn't tell you what else I've seen Christian Ward art in. Uh, let's see. I can look. I have a quick peek because I think this is perfect for the book, and mm -hmm. I think the build of the crew and the build going towards this unidentified object, and then but then the big crescendo of the action set piece and like th this idea that Aquaman's this unknown element that comes in and like helps fight this thing back is very interesting and obviously we should mention as well when when Yvette's talking to the Russian guy and she's saying I'm a marine biologist and also a behavioral like expert or something like that she says uh she sums it up by turning to him and saying I talk to fish which yeah. is a, obviously a nice neat reference to Aquaman but I actually think it's going to be a a thing where her and Aquaman when they eventually do have to interact are going to find some common ground and get along because of this, I suspect. But uh, I thought that was a really neat way of like her like summing that up. It, was it just me, or did you get the impression that like the way they don't figure out or guess that this is Aquaman makes me think that Aquaman is not a known thing to most of the world? That's what I was getting with his the whole thing of of him going up to that First Nations woman, and that she knew who she, he was. Yeah. It's almost like he. He lives on the outskirts, is, right? Yeah, because obviously it's kind of, it feels like it's set in the future or some version mm -hmm. of it, which makes you think, is this like him, like he's like been in hiding for a long time afterwards? Right. But at the same time, this could be like an alternate like origin where this is how he right. like becomes known to the world or it's something first, like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Regardless though, it doesn't feel like a world where like the Justice League exists. This, this feels like it's just a world where Aquaman and nothing else yeah. exists. Yeah, which is yeah. okay. Like, which, uh, there's so many good like Batman Elseworlds and stuff where yeah. only Batman exists or only Superman exists. This this is totally fine. Like, yeah. So, it? so, so um, Christian Ward's worked on Odyssey with Matt Fraction, which is a okay a, a sci-fi retelling of the Odyssey, Invisible Kingdom with G Willow Wilson, um, but also did Thor with Jason Aaron and Batman with Tynan. So okay. I'm sure that's where we know some of his names from. Is yeah, the I've heard, so I've probably read the, the the Thor and Batman issues that he's done. Yeah, and I'm and I'm looking here for his DC stuff. Um, Suicide Squad Volume Two, which I don't know if we read that. Um, Legend of the Swamp Thing, Halloween Spectacular, Batman Secret Files, The Gardener. That's where you know it. Urban Legends, he did a story. Okay, okay. So he's, Superman Red and Blue, these are all his DC works, yeah. But I, I think you can tell from that list, though, why it's all these little one-off appearances where he's not yeah. stuck in my mind as like a... Whereas, yeah. this is a great showpiece. I mean, obviously I mean, obviously, some of those other books you said will be showpieces as well, but I've not read them. Yeah. 
uh, at DC, this is like a showpiece book where it's like, oh, this is going to be three issues of just like his arc telling the whole story. Mm-hmm. And Ram V's writing, of course, has been excellent. He's one of our favorite writers right now at DC mm-hmm. for good reason. Um, yeah, th- this like these black label books are like killing it recently. I, I like the, the, so many of them have been, have been, have been excellent. Um, I, you know, I pff, like I'm I'm floored. I like, figured this was going to be very much your thing when I was. When I was getting aliens vibes, or at least alien vibe, like it felt like they were on. The it's more, yeah, world. it's more alien you know? than aliens because it's not like right. a team of soul. I would say it's a little alien, but aliens like a bunch of people who know each other. I would yeah. say it's, it's got that unknown factor of alien, but the crew feel a bit more like um, bizarre. The thing that's coming to my mind right now is species, which is completely different. But <laughs> the, the reason why I'm saying that is because it's the same thing where it's like a team of all these experts from different fields who are assembled to hunt yeah. like, the alien in that movie. Uh, obviously, it's not this like journey to a mysterious thing. Well, I just found Kristen Ward did a very great Poison Ivy piece, which will um, now be my new background on my phone. So, yeah, um, I l- obviously it's dealing with a lot hard. of water. Uh, the book it's got a lot of water in the mm-hmm. backgrounds, or even sometimes it'll just be like around the panels uh, when they're on the ship. You'll get like these panels. The, the backgrounds just like the water, but it's very blue. There's like mm-hmm. little hints of uh, green or purple occasionally to give it a little bit of yeah, you know, just a bit of vibrancy in this kind of more artistic mm-hmm. take on it as opposed to just sort of this ultra realistic thing it's you know that some books go for um it, you know as it goes on you really get this 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 vibe from it this sense of style and like i say the 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 building suspense right before the kraken attack i think is exceptional and it's where it's where mm-hmm. the book really sold me on what it was uh because like I, I was enjoying kind of like getting to know the crew a little bit getting to know yvette and them like theorizing what their like the true intentions of this mission are or if there's something mysterious going on it's definitely my kind of story but once it like got the crack and stuff and it like everything ramped up at the end i was like okay you know what this was a this was a perfect ramping up from nothing to something for a first issue mm-hmm. um so yeah but just the minor quibble that like i wasn't as into like the arthur the first arthur section but i think it's just because it's establishing that he is kind of this loner who doesn't really interact with the world beyond just this wanting to interact with them in secret in this little village. Uh, but other than that, uh, like, and maybe, maybe yeah, it could have ended a few pages earlier and just kept this, the end yeah. pressure too, but well, minor it's, quibbles. Yeah, so. it's very much, I'm, I'm, and I said earlier in the show, but I'll say it again here, it's very <clears> much of a Ram V style from what I'm familiar with from his superhero books. Um, this, it does feel like a novel, right? It feels very restrained, where it needs to be, um, and you know the 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 narration and stuff don't feel like a traditional comic. The way that the narration set up and you know how some of the characters talk, and it feels like a novel that way, which is very good because it makes it you know it really makes the whole black label thing feel special, right? When it's not just typical superhero stuff, um, and. Uh, it's I mean, cool I mean, that he can fit Aquaman into this. There's definitely something to be said for a really well thought out prestige, you know, 46 issue thing that like has all this time and effort put into it. It's allowed to just be its own thing with a consistent artist and why that in theory should blow away most arcs of an ongoing comic book because an ongoing comic mm-hmm. book has so much time constraints and how it's made. Uh, obviously there's a lot of great ongoing comics and it's kind of an art form in and of itself, but it's nice that DC have like offered this new line to really embrace just great individual stories. And, uh, this is another example of it. Uh, what are you giving, uh, Aquaman Andromeda issue one? I mean, it's an eight. Yeah, I'm going straight nine on this bad boy. There you go. Uh, there you go. I love this issue one. I highly recommend Aquaman Andromeda issue one, uh, to people. Uh, Ram V is winning me. I mean, not that he hadn't won me over yet, but like, you know, like I fell away from his Justice League Dark because I'm just not a big magic guy. But mm-hmm. everything else he's done uh, at DC has has tickled my fancy, and clearly shows that he, he, uh, oh, his really? sensibilities appeal to my taste. Let's just say that. Yes. On top of his writing quality, um, which is obviously important. 